Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this webinar on University versus Apprenticeships, uh, which is provided by Royal Holloway University of London. Okay, so today's session, here's a little schedule of what we're going to be covering today. Um, so I'm just going to give you some information first about Royal Holloway um, and then we're going to look at the three different routes that are available to do with university and apprenticeships. We'll then look at some of the benefits of these different routes and have a, a slight kind of mini debate. Don't worry, you're not going to have to unmute yourself or anything like that. Um, and then we'll just finish off with a bit of a true and false and a question session as well. OK, so what is higher education? That's what we're talking about today and the different routes in higher education. So let's see if you're all awake on this pretty gloomy Friday afternoon. Can you please type in the chat your opinion of your definition of what is higher education? What do you know about it? Any suggestions? OK, brilliant. Someone's put education after GCSEs. Yeah, OK. OK, someone else has said maybe post 16 or post 18 study. Yeah, absolutely. University question marks also come through. This is really good. Uh, expanding your knowledge on certain topics to be specialised in them. Nice. So kind of a more general um, overview of that. Fantastic. OK, this is really good. Well, if you're thinking to yourself, I have no idea how I would define this. Don't worry. It's a bit of a kind of a vague question anyway. And this is hopefully this session will be really, really helpful in, you know, in improving your understanding in that. So. Higher education is education following school or college which takes place at a university or any other educational institution. The main routes are university degree, which is normally a three to four year course, and it can include a year abroad or placement, or an apprenticeship or degree apprenticeship, where you earn a wage and graduate with a degree. A university degree is £9,250 a year and approximately £10,000 um, of living costs per year as well, and you pay back as little as £30 a month. Whereas a degree apprenticeship is free to study and you're paid to work. And um, that is about a minimum of £3.90 per hour, or £3.90 £3 per hour. And don't worry, we're going to look in a lot more detail in this soon, but this is just a very, very brief overview. Okay, so I'm going to refer a lot to the education ladders today. You might have heard of this before. If you haven't, don't worry. Um, but this is what I'm going to be kind of referring to as we're looking at the different routes today. But just like a normal ladder, you don't have to climb all the way to the top. So you can see there that level one is um, GCSEs going all the way up to level eight. It's not a, a target that you have to get all the way to the end. OK, you don't you know, it, it's designed for you to go as high as you want to go. And not everybody wants to get a PhD. But that level eight is there if that's your respiration. As I said, it's perfectly acceptable to stop wherever you want to on this ladder. As long as you feel that's the right and appropriate level for you, that's fine. For example, for myself, I'm kind of halfway between um, level six and level seven. And that for me is the perfect place. Other people have got really incredible jobs with only the lower level qualifications that you can see in purple. It's also worth noting that this ladder isn't completely linear. You can come back to at any stage of your life. And for example, there's no, you know, there's no age limit on going to university. You might even need a certain level of education for a job or a promotion that you're going for at work. So you might come back to that ladder and do a course at university. Now, just in case any um, anyone's noted here, the kind of the differences that there are, there's a bit of repetition. So you can see their degree and foundation degree and the different types of apprenticeships as well going up that ladder. Um, so apprenticeships that we're going to talk about today can be any level and just on this ladder, you know, just like on the ladder, you can work your way up and progress from beginner to intermediate, advanced and higher, and then even, you know, to level seven, uh, level six and level seven for that. But as I said, we're going to come into lots more detail um, about this later. Equally, if you're wondering why GCSEs is in the middle of one and two there, and um, that depends on your grade. So grade one to three or DEFG is level one. And then four to nine or C to A star is level two. And there's also kind of lots of other qualifications that count as well. Things like music grades, 
etc. If you do want to know a bit more information on this, um, just have a little, you know, bit of a search engine and type in kind of gov.uk um, and what qualification levels mean or education ladder and this will come up for you. Okay, so these are the three areas that we're going to be focusing on today, degree, apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships. Now, as you can see, um, degrees and apprenticeships are quite different, but they're joined together by something in the middle called degree apprenticeships. And you might know loads about one of these areas, two or all three, or you might know absolutely nothing at all. And that's why you're here. Doesn't matter because I'm going to go through it. And if you've obviously got any questions at the end, I can, you know, that I've not answered through this presentation. Please do feel free to ask. But these are the kind of things we're going to be talking about today. So just have a think to yourself about these questions relating to the three different areas. What subjects can you work or study in? How long do they take? What level will you be at the end? Do you need to have work experience? How much do they cost? Do you earn any money? And what do you need to go onto the course? But just, you don't have to type anything into the chat unless you want to, but just have 30 seconds thinking about those colored circles in relation to those three areas. Okay, so maybe you've shocked yourself. Maybe you know absolutely loads or you know a little bit less than you thought when you came here. As I said, hopefully we can answer all of these questions for you today. So how do you go about choosing? Before we even look at these options, how do you go about choosing what's right for you? The things to consider are aspects like your future job and career. What do you want to do when you're older? And again, it's okay if you don't know, but is there anything that interests you? Have you done any work experience? How do you like to learn? Do you like being in school or are you more of a hands-on learner? Do you mind exams or is coursework more your thing for assessment? What type of person are you? Would you suit the kind of environment that the course you've chosen would offer? What do you need to get in? Is it the appropriate level for you? What are your aspirations? What do you want from your life? For example, do you want to live in a city? Do you want to travel, earn loads of money, help people? Yeah, what do you want to get out of your life and what's important to you? And most importantly, what do you enjoy? There's no point choosing something, whatever route that might be, that you don't feel passionate about or you don't care about. The cliche statement is always, you know, you've got to get yourself out of bed in the morning to do that route and you have to enjoy it. You have to love it. OK, so first, let's have a look at apprenticeships. What is an apprenticeship? Well, you spend 80% of your time in the workplace, learning skills that are relevant to that job. Okay, an apprenticeship can be a range of levels, just like we talked about on the education ladder. You are paid an apprenticeship salary, and that's approximately £4.15 an hour until you're over 19 and you've completed your first year, and then it increases. Um, most apprenticeships last for a minimum of a year. Some can be much longer as well and they lead to work, the next level of apprenticeships, or university or college. Now, apprenticeships train you for a specific job role, for example, to be a chef or a gardener or a carer. So they train you for that specific role, and we'll look at this more in a minute. And therefore, you have to apply to an apprenticeship just like you would a job. So finding the role, filling out an application form, going to an interview, etc., etc. Some of the benefits of an apprenticeship it's a practical approach to learning, so it's more hands on and vocational. If you're dead set on an area that you want to go into, it's really good to focus on training for that exact specific career or role. You do earn a salary as you learn on the job, which is obviously a massive advantage for some people. Now, it is worth noting it's lower than a graduate university salary, but you are earning from the beginning. As I said, you get lots of experience and a chance to work your way up the ladder and you can progress. And there are lots of other options and routes as well. So what's out there? What kind of apprenticeships are there? So here you should be able to see how apprenticeships broadly fall into some following types. So how many have you got there? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's about 12-ish kind of categories of different types of apprenticeships. 
Now, within one of those types, so that's the business administration and law, which you can just see there on the left, I've just chosen um, a kind of a range of the types of apprenticeships that you might find within that um, sector. OK. Just give you a second to kind of have a little look down there. Now, as it says here, it is worth noting that these apprenticeships, they are very, very competitive and you are locked into that one particular job. So let's go back. You've seen all the different categories, the different types of apprenticeships that you could go into. You've chosen an area and then within that area, you've then chosen a specific role. For example, within accounting here, you might train to be in auditing in accounting and that's the area you work in. OK, so you train for that area and then you pretty much stay in that area, which is why we say it's really important to be kind of dead set on that is the area that you want to go into. Um, it's obviously worth noting there are lots more examples. I've not obviously managed to get them all on there. Um, and it's also not guaranteed that these apprenticeships run. Um, the government is trying really hard at the moment to make more apprenticeships available. But because it depends on an individual company and their needs, it's not guaranteed that every single one that you've seen the year before will run again. So it's really, really worth doing your research um, if you are keen to do this. And I'll show you how you can do um, some research later on. OK, degree apprenticeships, that middle circle. So a degree apprenticeship is somewhere in the middle of a degree and an apprenticeship, hence the name. The average time for one of these degree apprenticeships is four years and you split your time between studying and working. Just like an apprenticeship you earn whilst you learn and the employer and the government pay your tuition fees, so no tuition fees. Therefore, you graduate from university with no student debt. Sounds pretty good. Now, as with everything, there are pros and cons to a degree apprenticeship. Um, so this is a family friend um, called Joe, and he's actually someone that I know who's doing a degree apprenticeship, which is quite rare because they're quite a new thing. Um, but I spoke to him about, you know, his experience, basically, and he is doing a digital degree apprenticeship. And within that, he will gain a degree in computer science from um, Birmingham. And what I've just done is basically asked him some of the kind of FAQs of how did he apply? How did he find out about it? You know, what's the deal with payment and jobs? And are there any kind of cons as well? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have um, give you kind of, again, 30 seconds just to read through so I you get a break from my voice and um, just to see what you think about his opinions about his degree apprenticeship. OK, so hopefully now you've had a bit of a chance to read through that. And um, I'm sure from reading these FAQs and these, this is genuine, this is straight copied and pasted from WhatsApp. OK, you can see there are definite pros and cons to a degree apprenticeship. So he gets onto his course, obviously, um, you know, he graduates with a degree and obviously gets paid for it. And he doesn't have any student debt, but there are strict requirements about what he must achieve from his degree and the job that he goes into. It doesn't as well as this give him the flexibility that a normal degree would give you um, and we're going to look at a, an example a little bit later on about you know the kind of routes available to you after doing a degree you know joe is very much now set on if he gets this requ um if he gets a certain you know grade in his degree this is the job he'll go into if not then as you've probably read you have to pay back and um, some of the fees which are called clawback fees so pros and cons okay Right, now we're going to have a look at university degree. Um, so an average course is three years. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, you will understand a subject much, much further and broaden your knowledge. And a degree is, a, uh, a, sorry, the degree awarded is a bachelor's degree, which is either a BSc or a BA, and that's a Bachelor of Sci Science or a Bachelor of Arts. You pay tuition fees for university, normally by taking out a student loan. But obviously you can apply for scholarships, bursaries and work part time to help pay towards that as well. So what are the benefits? It prepares you for life outside of education. 
So you can do things, you know, at university like learning a language for free, gaining that independence. You know, maybe you're going to learn to cook for the first time. It gives you budgeting skills, which is so important, and maybe living outside of the family home as well. The friends that you might, uh, the friends that you make, may be for life. Um, you know, that could be from your course or the people that you live with. If you do a year abroad or an in industry, amazing opportunities to meet new people. There's a huge choice of courses available. For some careers, you might need to have a degree, and we'll talk again about that in a little bit. And as I said, you've got the opportunity to study or work around the UK or abroad. And for me, if you were on my last webinar, you realise that was just my, the best bit of my degree. The other kind of benefits of doing a degree are things like there's also the flexibility to do part time degrees and accelerated degrees, um, which is when you condense the degree into, say, two years. As I said, you can obtain loans for your course and your daily living costs, which you can't do with apprenticeships. And there's more flexibility with job prospects and more of a range of study options as well. So it definitely gives you the flexibility doing a degree. OK, so kind of carrying on with the university side of things for now, I'm um, just going to give you a little bit of information about Royal Holloway. Um, so if you don't know where we are, we are in Egham, um, which is just outside of Surrey. We're very, very near to Windsor, to Englefield Green, Twickenham, Virginia Water, and only 40 minutes away um, to London by the train. We are the top 22nd university in the UK. And you can see there that 88% of our students said they were satisfied with their um, university experience. On the left, um, you'll see a map of our campus university. Um, if you've ever seen a picture of the university before, um, the big purple building kind of on the bottom left is our founders building. Um, and all of the purple buildings are accommodation where you would stay. The blue buildings are academic buildings where you'd have lectures and seminars. And the red buildings are the kind of social areas as well. You can also see, as well as having our beautiful Founders Building, um, we're really, really lucky to have lots and lots of green spaces as well, which is quite uncommon for a, a university or a campus university that's so close to so many big towns and obviously London as well. So we've definitely got the best of both worlds. OK, so now imagine we're going to carry on with this university experience. What can you study? So you could take an aspect of your favourite subject at school and do this in lots and lots of detail for three or four years. At Royal Holloway, we've got more than 250 courses that you could study for your degree. You can see there that we've got a list of our 20 departments, and obviously within those 20 departments is a massive range of subjects that you could study. So, you know, not just geography, but you could also study human geography or physical geography. Or with history, you could do medieval or ancient. So the possibilities are honestly endless. Finding a degree is all about, you know, finding what you're passionate about and what you love. And that could be something really broad, like, I don't know, music, or that could be something much, much more specialised. Now, again, you might even decide that actually you want to study something that you've never had the chance to study before, something a little bit less familiar. Something like criminology or architecture, maybe game design, physiotherapy, primary education. The list is really endless. So here are some kind of less familiar courses that are available at different universities. And now, unfortunately, not all of these are available at Royal Holloway, but they do all exist. Um, and there's even crazier courses out there like, excuse me, things like circus studies, um, wine making, esports, Viking studies. There are so many different options out there. You also might want to have a think about joint honours, and that's a really popular choice for lots of undergraduate students. If you're not sure what this is, that's when you choose a degree that's a 50-50 split between two different subjects. So this is what I did for my degree. I did English and Spanish, um, and I wanted to study both of those subjects because I just couldn't decide which was for me. And when someone told me about joint honours, I was like, well, this is amazing. I get to do both of the things I love. And normally, when you're doing a joint honours, the two subjects would kind of complement each other. And um, for example, English and Spanish really did that. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, lots of my friends did. Well, I had a friend who did physics in Spanish. Random, but it worked for him. Um, lots of universities as well do something called major minor, and that's when you would do a kind of a, a slightly more uneven split, normally 75-25%, um, depending on what you want to do with your degree. So lots and lots of flexibility and choice. So why would you go to university? What are some of the kind of overall benefits? 
making new friends, as we know, is really, really important, not just from the people on your course, but the people that you live with from all over the world, the UK. Learning new skills is a massive part of going to university. Again, that's from your degree and the clubs and societies that you might join. And we've got over 110 at Royal Holloway. You might become an expert in your degree and, as I said, progress up their education ladder a little bit higher. Studying abroad, as I've kind of reiterated a million times, is such an amazing part of certain degrees. Work experience, I couldn't recommend work experience enough, you know, whether that's volunteering or doing a placement year, year in industry, work experience, get as much as you possibly can. Even if it teaches you that actually, no, that's not what you want to do, it's still a really useful, valuable experience. <laughs> Living away from home, for some people this is um, not what they want to do, for some people it's an absolute must, okay, but it's still a part of going to university, even if you do live at home and it's about learning how to commute and how to budget, or if it's, you know, I need to get seven hours away from my family because they drive me crazy, who knows. As I said, clubs and societies are a massive, massive benefit of going to university. The, you know, the opportunities that you have are just like no other when you go to uni there's so much on offer that you can do and you can try out and job prospects so it's really important to note that some jobs do require a specific degree for example to be you know a vet or a doctor or a dentist but it's also worth noting that lots of employers do ask for a degree just to apply to the job um, it doesn't necessarily matter what it's in and that's called a facilitating subject which we'll look at in a second but lots of um jobs do require you to have a degree and that's obviously a massive benefit of going to university. So job prospects, I said I was going to talk about it. So with university um, you can study a facilitating subject which is something like um, history or English, uh, philosophy, something like that where it's not kind of job specific. The possibilities are endless. You, know, you can show off that you've got those skills of going to university, having a degree, and the possibilities where you can get a job are really, really, truly limitless. With a job specific degree from university, you're also going to greatly increase your chances of employment. So, as I said, if you wanted to be a vet, you're going to need a degree in veterinary, you know, in veterinary medicine or veterinary science to become a vet. As I said, though, many jobs do require you to have a degree, even if it's not subject specific. Whereas with apprenticeships, um, apprenticeships train you for a specific role and area. You'll learn skills specific to that job. So as I said, if you do an apprenticeship um, to be an, a chef, that is the area you work in and those are the skills that you will gain. You can progress in that role and career, but you are restricted to that field. And some courses do have clawback fees if you don't meet the requirements or, for example, if you don't get the grades or follow through with the job commitments. Now to find and apply. Um, so university, what I would recommend you do is visit individual university websites. We obviously know that this year it's a little bit different. You probably can't go to as many open days, but do try as much as possible by speaking to people, doing your research online, social media, etc. to try and compare those kind of campuses, accommodation and obviously courses online and through prospectuses. As I say, visit the university when it's possible. Don't know when that will be, but fingers crossed. Um, and then what you do is you apply through UCAS, which I'm sure lots of you have heard of before. And that's when you get five choices of course and location. Um, you can then apply for your loans through Student Finance England as well. For an apprenticeship, on the other hand, you search for them on the government website and the link is there. That's gov.uk slash apply dash apprenticeship. And you can also use UCAS as well to find apprenticeship courses. Um, and again, the link is there for you. And as I stated earlier, you do need to apply to apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships like a job application. And um, for some degree apprenticeships as well, it's worth noting that you need to apply to university through UCAS, but then also apply to the kind of apprenticeship side of it by doing, you know, an application form, going along for an assessment day, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I just wanted to compare an example and I was using kind of Joe's area um, for that as a basis. So computer science is the example I've chosen. Um, so you can see here, this is the university side of studying computer science. So by going to university, you would gain a bachelor's of science um, and it would be a three years full time course. 
in year one and year two, these are the kind of modules that you would study. Um, I am conscious that maybe not all of you wanting to do computer science, but I just want to show you here the real kind of range of modules that you would be studying if you were to go to university. Um, and this is the same for all degrees. There's a humongous range of modules, you know, that are compulsory or optional that you could study and find your area of expertise. Um, you know, studying computer science at university as well, you, as I've kind of said before, you get the chance to do a placement year. This could be studying abroad, working or carrying out voluntary work. And at Royal Holloway, um, where this is taken from, you can do all three if you want to as well. Um, Royal Holloway also recommends here with computer science that, you know, a degree in this subject could get you a job in any of these areas. So you've got things like the arts, media, finance, aerospace, health, and of course the IT sector, and it's all about solving real world problems and building systems that can improve people's lives. And I think lastly, this is a, another benefit that people overlook a lot with the university, is that you get kind of networking and careers benefits that you just don't get not being in university. So, you know, there's alumni who can give you contacts, advice, and lots of networking opportunities that might help you get a job. Things like careers fairs, careers advisors, work placements, all those kind of things are so massively helpful in helping you to find a job once you finish uni. So to compare that kind of computer science route, I tried to find a similar apprenticeship. Um, this, I mean, I'm not very good at computers, um, as I'm sure Jonathan can know, <laughs> can back me up. But um, so I do apologise if this is a bit wrong, but this was, you know, quite a similar kind of computery um, apprenticeship. So. This would be an apprenticeship to become an IT support engineer apprentice. And you can see here just by having a little look at the kind of the wage that you would receive, the duration, how long you'd have to do it for, what kind of person you need to be. And obviously, as I've kind of said before, this is, and as it says in the right hand corner there, it does offer long term security and the opportunity to progress into that permanent position in this area. And I think that's the, the really key thing to notice that. With an apprenticeship, you you know you need to be 100% sure that's the area you want to go into because that's the area you're going to be trained for, and that's the area you go into. Just a reminder as well that um, apprenticeships are very very competitive because they are like jobs, um, and as I said, not every company will put out the same apprenticeships every single year, so it's definitely worth doing your research. Okay, so I'm going to have a little breather from talking and let you guys do some of the work now. So what I'm going to do is um, just give you kind of two minutes or so. So using a paper and pen, if you've got one in front of you or just your phone, what I want you to do is just have a, a bit of a think to yourself about some of the pros and cons of apprenticeships and degrees. Um, and then we're just going to get a bit of feedback in the chat after two minutes. So things to think about that we've talked about are the cost, the time they take, the knowledge that you gain, the job prospects and the experience. Is one choice better than the other? So just have a minute or two just to think to yourselves and then when you hear me talking again I'm just going to ask some of your opinions. Obviously this is completely anonymous, I won't read out your names or anything like that and I won't hold you to anything. Um, so just have a little think to yourself and then hopefully we can get some feedback in just a minute. Okay.
Okay, amazing. So I've already had some messages coming through, which is fantastic. So if you're feeling brave, as I said, I won't read out your name or anything like that. Um, and I will not be holding this to you. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't be going to your schools or anything like that. Um, please, if you can, do pop your opinion um, or, you know, multiple opinions in the chat and we'll just you talk it through. I think sometimes, you know, areas like this, it's really helpful just to get other people's opinions, especially if you are feeling a bit confused. Talking to people is is a really, really, really good way to kind of think things through more clearly. So we've said um, someone's message in saying that things are a bit expensive. Um, I presume you mean university is expensive um, compared to apprenticeships. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. Someone's also said time consuming. Yeah, so we know obviously a, um, a degree might be three years. Whereas, you know, a, an apprenticeship might be a lot shorter unless you want to carry on and progress with that. Good. Someone else has put, um, if you're academic, a degree is the better option. OK, we're actually going to come to that in just a minute. So that's that's a yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you. We'll come back to that. This is nice. So someone's put, um, well, I don't think one is better than the other. I would say university is the right path for me. I'm potentially looking at having a portfolio career, so keeping my prospects open is ideal. Thank you so much. That's really nice to hear, you know, the kind of different side of it as well. Fantastic. Just see if there's anything else coming through. Yeah, someone's put that they think um, that certain, you know, degree apprenticeships or apprenticeships are for kind of specific subjects. And that's, that's again, that's a really, really um, useful viewpoint. I know when I was at school, there was definitely a kind of opinion that apprenticeships were only in certain subjects. And actually, I do think that um, the government and things have put out a lot more apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships in a whole range of different subjects. So do have a look. But yeah, you're right. It's some, you know, <clears throat> as I said, things like some specific areas you have to get a degree, whereas some would be more, you know, in the kind of apprenticeship area. Fantastic. Someone says they don't know. Yeah, I and mean, that's completely normal. My tip to you would be the more research you can do, the better. Uh, someone's saying you only pay back 9% of your tuition fees and maintenance zone over a certain amount of salary. Yeah, absolutely. So it, whilst it is expensive, and we talked about this in the last webinar, you only pay back say 30 pounds a month when you're earning over 25,000 pounds a year. So it's it's really not that much. It's, you know, it's not like you're gonna be bankrupt from going to university. Just seeing if there's anything else. Yeah, this is a really lovely point. So someone's put, um, if you choose join honours, so the 50-50 split, you don't have to limit your choices like you would in apprenticeships. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think that's a really key point to take away from this. The, you know university whether that's joint honours or major minor the, the or just a normal degree there is so much more flexibility um as i said you know as i said a million times before my degree was in english and spanish um and you know that i could have gone into so many different areas with that whereas for me an apprenticeship you know to do that looked amazing but i wasn't when i was you know in sixth form i, I wasn't sure exactly the job that I wanted to go into so it would have just been too much pressure someone else put experience yeah absolutely and that's life experience you know degree experience everything so yeah fantastic guys thank you so much for these opinions they're amazing and um, we'll go on to the next slide because I'm conscious of the time as well we've still got just a couple more slides but thank you so much for them that's brilliant okay so quick little game just before we get on to our last few slides how much can you remember or how much have you learnt? I suppose I should say. So if you could just type in true or false into the chat or just a T or an F just to save some time. So you have to pay tuition fees for a degree apprenticeship. What do we think, true or false? Yeah, absolutely amazing. So far we've had completely the right answers, 100%. It's absolutely false. The employer, the employer and the government pay your tuition fees for a degree apprenticeship. You can study all four of the jobs below with an apprenticeship. Law, cybersecurity, science and accounting. True or false? Mm, we're getting a bit more of a split this time. So pretty much 50-50. True, false. Interesting. It's true. 
So you can study law, science, accounting and IT, excuse me, with a degree or an apprenticeship. You can become a doctor through a degree apprenticeship, true or false. Enjoy that extremely creepy gif of Mr Bean there. <laughs> Okay, mainly getting false here, but with a couple of trues. Okay, that is false. So as I said, job, you know, some of the, uh, some career options do need a university as a, a university degree as a, can't speak English today. Let's try that one again. So some career options do you need a university degree as a qualification. Okay, and being a doctor is one of them. If you're unsure about the route that you want to go down and whether you need a degree for that, please do some research, okay, because as I said, you don't want to get all the way down the line and then find that, you know, you, you've missed a trick there. Okay, so you get paid a salary when studying an apprenticeship, true or false? Yeah, absolutely, everyone's, everyone's got that right, that's brilliant, that is obviously true. The amount you receive, however, does depend on your age, the role that you're doing and experience. If it's not a set amount, again, do some research if this is something that you want to know more, a bit more about. And this is kind of coming back to one of the comments that we've had in the chat, that you need better grades to do a university degree than an apprenticeship. What do you think, true or false? Ah, this is really interesting. Literally, the chat's like TF, 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 changing every minute. Yeah, so kind of, I'd say you've gone for about 50-50 split again now. This is a common misconception, okay? Each course and institution for degrees, apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships all have different entry requirements. And as I said right at the beginning of this webinar, you know, that education ladder doesn't stop for certain degrees, you know, whether that's foundation degree, degree, apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships, there's so many different levels and it's not like, one is necessarily more academic than the other one because some degrees will be more vocational than you know some apprenticeships it's, there's, it's not a kind of you know a clear-cut decision i think that's often a, a bit of a stereotype or a stigma with apprenticeships and degrees um it's definitely changing i think the way that we're seeing this nowadays is definitely changing fantastic so just to kind of conclude before i show you my last two slides um, I do hope that you've gained a really valuable experience and kind of an insight from this webinar into the different areas and the pros and cons of each. Um, as I said, all the way through this, please do some research on whichever route you are interested in, because every single course is going to have its own requirements, conditions and content. Um, if you're coming away from this feeling even more confused, that is normal. Yeah, knowledge is power and all that. Um, but do you know chat to someone like a careers advisor or a teacher or a parent or guardian or even a friend just to voice those opinions and get some other kind of advice and there's so much information online as well 